Okay guys, so hopefully if the internet's working now. All right, go to the classroom website, uscience.wix.com backslash about, and click on physical science, which I think most of you did already. You can see for 426, that's today, it says test rockets online. That's what we're going to do. With all the measurements we took yesterday, we're gonna plug those into a simulator, and we're going to test them, okay? So you guys make sure you're doing this stuff as you go along with me. Uh, this tutorial that I'm doing right now, it's being recorded, and I'm going to take this video, put it on YouTube, and post it to this website again under tutorial. So anyone like Shayna, you're not done with your rocket. A couple other people have not finished up their rockets. And when they do, they'll have to take the measurements, and then they'll have to go back through and watch this tutorial online, okay? So go ahead and click on the NASA Rocket Sim. This is the Rocket Simulator. It pulls up another website. It should. That's what it's supposed to do. This is a Rocket Simulator. It will pop up as another website. Let me give it a second for it to load. And it's, it's called Rocket Modeler 3. And you'll get this little jigsaw puzzle, which means it's waiting on your piece of the puzzle. You need to click run this time, and it should load it. It's a, it's not great Most of these computers are going to work with Java. Some of them will not. If it is telling you that it's an inactive plugin, that means that it doesn't have what we need to run it. Java either is not updated or it's not present on there. Okay? Activate. Spell that. Out of date. I see. Okay. Um, huh. That's weird. Does it give you the option to update it? If you don't have this, guys, if this isn't working for you, Kimberly, Kimberly, quiet. If this is not working for you, then just pay attention as we go through this because this is very self-explanatory. It's very simple to do. Gregory, headphones. Uh, just pay attention as I'm going through it, and then you should be fine. When someone else finishes theirs, they can pass it off to you, and it'll take like 10 minutes, literally, to do this, okay? So when it does work, if it does work, you should get this. Raise your hand if you get this website and this simulator to pop up just fine. It loaded. Anybody? Audrey, does it work for you? Kelly? No, Jacqueline? Nothing? Okay. So what you're going to do is you have your sheet of paper which says rocket calculations. I'll open this up over here and this is the same paper you guys have. It just does not have any information filled in on it because this is what I printed up for you guys. This was your worksheet. Is it still recording? Yes, it is. Okay, so you guys are going to take all the information that you calculated yesterday and that you measured and you're going to plug it into the simulator and it's going to tell you how efficient your rocket's going to be, how high it should fly, how fast it should go, all of that information. Chelsea, that computer is not going to work for you the way you need it to. So you can hold on to it, but just pay attention to this, okay? All right, so it also has a website listed at the top of this paper in case you need to take it home and do homework um, or do the simulator at home. This is the website to the simulator, okay? Now we're going to look at this section down here that I'm highlighting. Nose, body, fins, fuel, pad, and launch. Okay? So we go back to this website. We can click on design. And this is the first process we're going to go through. You guys already designed your rockets. So what you'll do for this is you will go through and for the tube, right? This is our tube. It tells us length in inches and diameter in inches. Well, we did ours in the metric system. So we're not going to do inches. We're going to change this up here to the metric system. And this is an air rocket. Okay, so we're doing it in the air. That's what we're going to click on. Air and metric system. Now we're on design. So you can put the length of your tube here. The ones that have a black background, like right next to the tube, you don't plug in values for that. That's a calculation. And it's getting that calculation from the length that you give below in centimeters and the diameter that you give below in, cent in centimeters. So for 
the body, we already calculated that stuff. We already measured it. Tube length, whatever your centimeters are, you should write that in right here. And then for diameter, you should take whatever you wrote in here in centimeters and put that right here. The fairing, the fairing we said is at the bottom. If I change the length of the fairing, you, you can see it added to the rocket, right? You see that bottom red portion right here? That's the fairing. We said that the fairing is a section that actually falls off the rocket. We didn't build those into ours, and so we're not going to have a fairing. You can make the length at zero centimeters. Diameter of it, it doesn't matter. If you have it at 2.5 or whatever, it doesn't matter because there's no length to it, okay? So once you have all of these variables plugged in, we're not quite there. Um, we want to make sure that our body design, I included on here, body as two-ply paper. We use paper to do this, right? So two-ply paper, two-ply paper, and then you can go ahead and click go. Go means I'm done with that step, okay? So we did it for the body up here. We can do that for the nose. Your nose length in centimeters is right here, length of the cone. And you did diameter of the cone. And that should be the second blank underneath the nose, right? Then you want to make sure that you have it as the shape being conical. Nobody did an elliptical one. You can see this elliptical shape. Nobody did a parabolic one. Nobody did spherical. You did conical one. The material for the nose should be hollow and it should be cardboard. You guys put paper there but you also put some tape on it so it's going to be a little bit thicker and so we'll choose cardboard as the option. The recovery system, I wrote this on your assignment here, it says no recovery system, right? And so the recovery system should just be none. Make sure it stays there. And then go ahead and click on go. Payload, the payload is in the nose and that's the amount of stuff being transferred. For real rockets, it's like people or it might be things that they're taking up to the moon or to the space station or food that they're taking along with them. In this case, no payload, okay? So it's already set at 0.0, .0 and that's great. That's what we want for payload. Click on go because it's good. And then lastly is fins. Now the fin section, it's kind of interesting because some of you guys made really funky shaped fins. And that's okay, because we can model that on here. It says one ply paper for fins, and then it has all these variables underneath that you guys calculated yesterday. So mine, okay, three, three fins. If we change the locate centimeters, that is referring to how far it is from the bottom of the tube or the body, okay? Some of you may have had a distance measurement from the bottom of the body up to the bottom of the fins. That's what value you should put in for the locate centimeters. That would be right here, distance from bottom of tube, okay? Then length in centimeters, that's the actual length from tip to tip of these wings, okay? 7.3 centimeters, some of you had pretty long ones, pretty big ones. And some of you have pretty small ones. That's going to be equal to length of each fin on your fin section here. Not right now, Michael. I want you to watch all of this, okay? And then the last one is width of each fin. And on here, you will put the width that you measured in that last column on your paper. The last two things are angles. And so you can see if you move these around to manipulate it, it's going to change the angle of those fins. And some of you had them directly straight across. If it's directly straight across, you set these angles to zero. And you're gonna have squared off corners. You can also just type in here what angle it is. If it was zero, it's easier to get to by typing in zero. Like Chelsea, that's how your fins are on yours, right? They would be at zeros. But some people had, like Travis, uh, who's not here today, but he had angles on his. Kimberly, yours is kind of like this, right? It's pretty steep angles. 
Yes, it is. It's going slowly, but yours goes down like a triangle, right, Kimberly? So yours would be a really high angle there. So you just need to adjust that so that it looks exactly how it does for you, okay? When you're done with that, you click on Go. So now we've done nose, payload, which we don't have, body, and fins for the design. It tells me that we're a go. Stability is good. It's a go. We can see our center of gravity versus our center of pressure. And they're off by a little bit, which is awesome. Now we click on fuel. Fuel on your paper, I told you pressure is at 518 kilopascals. We're going to measure that when we do it uh, out in the field. We're going to measure that with PSIs because we're going to use just an, a normal bike tire pump. But converting that into the metric system is kilopascals. So I will change these numbers until I get something close to 518. Or you can just type it in if it will let you. Okay, and so you keep playing with it until you got to 518. And length in, that's referring to this piece that we're going to put the rocket on top of that's actually going to launch it. How far in is it going to go? I set the number for that, 7.6 centimeters, which is three inches, okay? So we'll make sure when you guys put your rockets on top of the launching tube that it's going to be three inches into it. I would change that number. Okay. When that's good, go ahead and click on go. We can see we've got to go for design, go for fuel. Now we need our pad. Pad, we have all these numbers which I already plugged in for you. You just need to put these into the program. The altitude, we're going to start at about one meter off the ground because the rocket launcher is going to be up a little bit higher. Okay. Wind, we're going to assume is at zero. Who knows? We may have a little bit of wind that day. Typically, we don't have much here. The angle is at zero. That means it's straight up. If we change these angles, we can see it tilting off to the side. But again, we want it at zero, straight up. And the length, make the length the smallest number that we can get it to, as close to zero as possible. 0 0.304, that's good. Okay, lastly is click glow, go and we go to launch. Now notice that there's no information to enter here. This is all black background, which means it's going to calculate it on itself. All we have to do is click fire. Okay, so we click on fire. It gives us a countdown. Three, two. What the heck happened? I guess it already launched it. I didn't put in real numbers for mine, so it didn't turn out too well. But yours should get an actual launching of the rocket, and it will tell you the time right here that it's been, that your rocket was in the air right here, and it will tell you the height, the maximum height that it goes in meters, and it will tell you the speed, how fast it goes in meters per second. Okay? So make sure you get all your variables in correctly, then you can click on fire and it's going to launch it and you'll see your rocket fly into the air and you'll get all the info you need from it. Okay.